Hey Canucks fans, how important is it to you that Kevin Bieksa retires as a Canuck? I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, June the 6th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Thanks to all of you who joined me for my double dose of live streams last night. I did my regular live stream at 9, did Canucks After Dark with Parker at 10. All went well. That's because the usual times for those kind of things, uh, well, basically tonight, I cannot uh, do Canucks After Dark, so we bumped it to last night. So I got hockey tonight, I got bowling tomorrow, got hockey on Wednesday, golfing on Thursday, but that will be my next live stream. will be Thursday night, not Wednesday night, because of hockey. Thursday night, I'm going to start between 10 and 10.30 whenever I get home, so I hope you join me on Thursday night. Let's talk about Kevin BX. So the reason why I'm bringing this up, really interesting article, interview with him in The Athletic, by Lisa Dillman. Lisa Dillman covers a lot of the California-based uh, stories, NHL stories. She's written actually about my cousin Dusty when he was the goaltending coach for LA a few years ago. Anyways, Lisa did a wonderful chat update with Kevin Bieksa and uh, about how he started his hockey academy, what he's been doing since he stopped playing for the Anaheim Ducks four seasons ago. And what was interesting is it came out that Kevin Bieksa, there were plans for him to sign a one-day contract with the Vancouver Canucks back in May 2020, sorry, March 2020, the end of March, and then retire as a Vancouver Canuck. And of course, we know what happened in the middle of March of 2020. The world shut down because of COVID. I think it was March 12 or March 13 was the day. Yeah, I remember I was supposed to go to a game on March 13, uh, Vancouver against Tampa. Uh, but then it, it got postponed, it got, well, got cancelled. And then Kevin BX has said he even had a plane ticket for March 15 to get to, uh, to, get to Vancouver. So again, at the end of March, he was going to sign a one-day contract and then retire as a Vancouver Canuck. So my question to you simply is, given what you remember from him, what you know of him, what you know of him now, is, is that important to you? Does that matter to you? Is that something that gets you excited because you remember how, how much of a valuable player and contributor he was for his 10 seasons here? Or is that, I don't want to say, is it um, for show or, or is it insignificant, I guess is my question. Um, I'll, I'll talk about some of the uh, what I think and then I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. So Bieksa was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks back in 2001 in the fifth round, 151st overall. And we know his story, how basically him and Kessler and Burroughs took a, a non-conventional, well, I'd say Burroughs took the most non-conventional way to get the Canucks, but then uh, Bieksa and Kessler came through the Manitoba Moose together and were called up at around the same time. But it was those three guys, the three gritty, feel-good stories of Burroughs, Kessler, and of course, Kevin Bieksa. Bieksa plays 10 seasons with the Canucks, basically ranging from the mid-2000s, so 2005, all the, 2004 5 all the way to 2014-15. And in doing so, in those 10 seasons, he had some really, really good seasons. Three of his seasons, he had over 40 points. He had a 44-point season, a 43-point season, a 42-point season. Uh, one of them was the, the Stanley Cup. Uh, actually, it was, no, I think it was 08, 09, actually. But, of course, when the Cucks were really good at the late 08, 09, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, 10, 11, 11, 12, 11, 12 13. Those, that five-year stretch. So Kevin Bieksa had three 40-plus point seasons. Put that in perspective, that would put him second overall in defenseman scoring only behind Quinn Hughes. Well ahead of Oliver ekman Larson, say this year. So, put uh, not only did he have three forty-plus seasons, he had a few seasons of over a hundred penalty minutes. That is basically unheard of right now. And one of his seasons, he had a plus thirty-two rating, which is pretty crazy. So, ten seasons with the Canucks, and in those ten seasons, of course, some Stanley Cup success, some Stanley Cup, uh, some playoff success, some playoff disappointment, and I'd say the most uh, memorable moment. He had a few, but the most memorable moment would be the goal um, off the stanchion. Uh, the puck went off the stanchion, goes to Bieksa. No one knows where it is except for him, and he helps eliminate the San Jose Sharks in in five games in 2010, 2011. So remember, that was after Burroughs slayed the dragon in Chicago, then Kessler single-handedly destroyed Nashville in the second round, and then Kevin Bieksa helps the Canucks win in, in that third round game. So... You have uh, that very memorable goal. You also have um, how much of a he stood up for his teammates. Um, uh, his, he was the master of the Superman punch. Yes, he actually he did a jumping punch in a few of his hockey fights. And even back then, we knew that he was very, very uh, articulate, great sense of humor. 
he even said in that article with Lisa Dillman that he loved to keep things light in the room and that's what he's done now with with his broadcasting career and then after he left the Canucks uh, 10 seasons with the Canucks then three years in Anaheim and then had to cut his career short after injury after 2017-18 so the past four seasons he's been working on his hockey academy in in California and of course gaining more prominence as um, as an analyst on Hockey Night in Canada. And people love Bieksa, and people love him because uh, for many reasons. He's an ex-player, um, so a former player, so that obviously that gives him instant, instant credibility already. He is very, very uh, witty, can be sarcastic, can be very playful, so it's a really good banter with Friedman and Rudy and, and Jennifer Botterill and Ron McLean, whoever else is on the panel. Uh, but because uh, I think that combination of as an ex-player, yet very articulate, and a sense of humor. He wraps all those things really well and he never seems flustered. He never seems like he doesn't know what to say or he never seems like he's saying something that isn't very important. So for all those reasons, he is uh, you know, uh, obviously very liked on the panel and people notice when he's not on the panel, when he's missing. And um, I, I think he's been a, a breath of fresh air to that Hockey Night in Canada crew. Now, uh, one really funny story, and I, I told it uh, at Canucks After Dark. He, Kevin Bieksa actually blocked me on Twitter once. He, he, I'm unblocked now, which is great. I don't think I followed him. I re-followed him just yet because I, but it doesn't matter. It was back in July 1 when he, back in 2014 or 15, 15 I guess it was 2015, where he was going to leave uh, the Vancouver Canucks. I think he just got traded, actually. Um, I can't remember if the Canucks ended up trading his rights or if he left as a free agent. Regardless, it was a time that hey, he, Kevin Bieksa, how uh, Eddie Lack was leaving the Canucks as well. And then we're recording the song in my in in one of my kids' bedroom bedrooms. It was Marie, Huey, it was Ariel Tuliao, it was me, it was my good friend Joseph San Jose and his wife Marianne. So four really good singers and me. And we did a Boys to Men parody, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, basically saying goodbye to to Kevin Bietz and Eddie Lack. And as we're recording this on July 1st, uh, it was in, they announced also, the news broke that they traded Zach Cassian to Montreal for Brandon Prest, I think. So while we're recording, we get the notifications on our phone that Cassian got traded. So we quickly changed the song to It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Zach, Kevin, and Eddie. Um, I, we added Zach in there. So we were basically doing a goodbye song to these three Canucks. Anyways, uh, it got some good, uh, good play on social media. But then next thing I know, Kevin Bieksa blocked me on Twitter, and I wasn't sure if he didn't like my singing. I wasn't sure if he didn't uh, if he didn't like the mentions or whatever it was, or he just thought it was too corny. Regardless, it took a few years, and then I had people coming to my my side on Twitter saying, "Hey, Kevin, why'd you block Knut Clay's the nicest guy?" Whatever, that was kind of fun, although unnecessary, although very much appreciated. All to say, uh, that was kind of funny. That was now seven years ago. I'm over it. He has unblocked me. As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to try and follow him again and we'll see what happens on Twitter. I'll update you at another time. So just a small Kevin Bieksa story. I say that uh, uh, just to, uh, to uh, out of, you know, just to add to this video, uh, one of my own personal experience with Bieksa, but most importantly, um, to add to just kind of this, this kind of character, this kind of, uh, this kind of look, profile of who Kevin Bieksa is. So my question to you, Canucks fans, is do you think, does it matter to you, would it be important to you, if Kevin Bieksa retired as a Canuck. The last thing I'll say um, is, yes, he had plans to do this in March. He did say in his interview with Lisa in March 2020 that at the start of this season, at the start of this 2021-22 season, um, he made remade contact with the Canucks and they hadn't promised anything, but they said that they were going to work something out. They still wanted to do it. And then Jim Benning got fired, and that's who he was dealing with, obviously, is Jim Benning. So he, he said, basically, he hasn't heard from Rutherford and Alvin yet. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a total big deal to him, but he said that he's not going anywhere and that he'd certainly be open to going down the road. So maybe we're going to uh, revisit this question this once again, the story once again. Uh, for me, I think it, it doesn't move the needle for me either way. I, you know, if it does happen, I think it's great as a Vancouver Canucks fan and as a, as a you know, faithful fan and, and someone who remembers a lot of his great moments. I would have no problem with it for sure. So if I had to pick one or the other, I'd say sure, do it as opposed to don't do it. But it wouldn't sweat me if he did not retire as a Vancouver Canuck. I, I don't see him. His jersey's not going to be raised. I don't think he's going to be on in the Ring of Honor. Um, you know, Matthias Olin and and I'm sure Alex Edler, though, that kind of uh, defenseman's going to be up there. Bieksa was good. I'd say he's the next tier down, though. He's not the uh, top tier Canucks defenseman like Olin, like Edler, and like Hughes is going to be. Um, so I, I don't see him Ring of Honor. I don't see him Jersey retirement. 
But if he wants to retire as a Vancouver Canuck, that's completely fine with me. But truly, um, it has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> truly, if it doesn't happen to, um, I don't think it's any sweat off off of the collective Canucks fans' back backs. But um, obviously, a beloved player when he was here with the team. So Canucks fans, let me know in the comments below what you think. Does it matter to you if Kevin Bieksa retires as a Vancouver Canuck? Give a shout out to my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss, and Advanced City Experts Real Estate Group, Jason Lim and his team. And thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brufield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Groove, and Carol Bovenlander. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or my videos or the membership tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Leave a tip, a super thanks if you'd like to. Become a member or upgrade if you like to, and definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Does Kevin BX uh, retiring as Vancouver Canuck matter to you? Lastly, if you made it this far, 11 minutes in the video, because his most famous goal was a stanchion goal, if you type in the comments the word stanchion, in all caps, S-T-A-N-C-H-I-O-N, or however you want to spell it, then I'll know you made it to the very end of this video, and I would appreciate you even more. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks call.